We had a uh, we had calls to say that the bus rolled over at approximately eleven thirty three last night. Um, once we received those calls, uh, we responded. Our crews, you know, which was essentially seven minutes until they're on scene, which is an exceptional response. The challenges were the density of the fog. It was about getting the resources, the appropriate resources to scene. It was also getting um, the appropriate, you know, treatment, which included blood products from the hospital network to the scene. 7.30's Adam Harvey is on the scene of the crash. Adam, the district ambulance commander that you were speaking to that we just saw, who we just saw in that grab, he's obviously been there for many, many hours. Can you tell me a little bit about what he's been doing over that time? Yes, well, he's just left the scene finally to go and get some sleep, Sarah, after uh, a long night and day here, uh, effectively overseeing this operation. Uh, he got here about 40 minutes after the bus rolled over and uh, just describes uh, quite an incredible scene where um, you've got tents being set up outside the bus uh, where people were being treated for very traumatic injuries, um, blood products coming in, helicopters having to land at a safe distance away because the fog was so thick, um, fire brigade crews and ambulance crews putting inflatable airbags underneath the bus to try and lift it up so that crews could access the casualties and the bodies inside. Uh, all this frantic activity took place over about three hours before the final casualties were able to be taken to four different hospitals, but the entire operation is still going on now. It, it's hard to imagine an operation like that being done in the midst of dense fog. Yeah, that's right. Uh, just even, even getting to the location would, would have been tricky, especially for those helicopters. But people got here extraordinarily quickly. The first highway patrol cars were here within a few minutes. An off-duty ambulance officer was one of the first people here, and, and some of the viewers might have heard his uh, uh, audio today of describing that scene um, in, in a very calm voice, but, but the, the things he was describing, the, the uh, seven fatalities at that point, and all of these code red and yellow for the most critical type of cases, uh, uh, was, was extraordinary. And as Luke Wiseman says, uh, he's never seen anything like that in his career in the ambulance service. And obviously it's been a very intense day. Is there still activity at the scene? Well, the bus has just been righted. The 57-seat bus is now um, back on its wheels. Uh, it's still there. The emergency services, the police accident investigation team, are still there trying to work out exactly what happened, trying to work out you know, why this, this, you know, what, what, what seems, I suppose, a relatively simple accident, a, a, a bus rolling onto its side, has led to so many deaths and how this could have happened. Uh, in extreme fog, very very thick fog, but but on a on a wide road, brightly lit, um, at an entrance to a to a, a motorway, it, it it seems extraordinary. Now, um, have you had a chance to gauge the response of the community around the area today, Adam? Yeah, I, I've I've spoken to quite a few people. Um, Disbelief, I think, was the first reaction of many when they got these calls saying that there was a, a terrible accident here. And then that's moved into just shock when they've realised it's not only has one of the worst accidents in recent memory happened in, in their backyard, but they know many of the people who are involved. Uh, the, the local mayor, uh, Sue Moore, was telling me that, that they think Five of the ten fatalities are from the small town of Singleton. There'll be a, uh, an area where people can go tomorrow to try and um, speak to counsellors and come to terms with, get help with what they've seen. I went to the local AFL club, which is where a lot of the, the players, um, because the bride and groom were both members of this uh, AFL club, the, the Singleton Roosters. Uh, all the players and their friends were gathering there I was struck by just how young everybody was. It, it, it's, uh, you know, it's a young team, as one of the senior members of the team told me, and all that they can do today is try and be there for each other, gather and, and um, give each other support through their presence. Adam Harvey, thank you very much indeed for talking to us this evening. Thanks. Thank you, Sarah.